Good morning. Happy Easter. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It's great to have you here for our Easter Sunday worship. Uh, just a few notes, uh, a few thank yous to before we get started. Um, we have several people to thank for uh, making worship possible this morning. We have Karen, who is going to be our lector. She also wrote the prayers, and she created the image that you just saw, which is welcoming people into worship. Stacy is our assisting minister. Emma is our cantor. Abby is providing music. Jeanette has provided our altar guild. Tom and Wayne are here for our AV and Jen is our Zoom host. Thank you one and all for making Easter worship possible. As usual, you can put prayers in the chat section. And if you need a copy of the bulletin, you can get that off of the website, which is stephenlc.org. There you can find a list of all the other activities that are coming up. We'll be doing communion online as we normally do. So you need a little bit of bread and either some wine or grape juice. And then just an important note that starting next Sunday, this coming Sunday, worship will start at nine o'clock and it will be hybrid. And that means it'll be both in person and online at the same time. So whether you're here at the church or whether you're online, it's the same worship. We'll have to make a few changes in that, but we'll, we'll make it work. And if you come in person, please wear a mask. We will have a cantor who will be doing the singing as we have been doing. So, uh, but those who are in person are asked not to sing. We'll continue to have helpers who are online and we continue to need help to help make worship possible. Just like all of the folks that we listed, we can use additional helpers. We're especially looking for more folks to help with our AV system and Zoom hosting as well as lectors and assisting ministers, both online and in person, as well as Altar Guild. So please, if you have an interest in doing that, uh, you wanna find out more of what's engaged with that, what's involved with that, please let us know. You won't do it alone, especially the AV. Uh, there's a team of folks who do that and we're looking to expand that. So we thank you. Let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship as we hear our prelude.
Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Refreshed by the resurrection life we share in Christ, let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We thank you, risen Christ, for these waters where you make us new, leading us from death to life, from tears to joy. We bless you, risen Christ, that your spirit comes to us in the grace-filled waters of rebirth, like rains to our thirsting earth, like streams that revive our souls, like cups of cool water shared with strangers. Breathe your peace on your church when we hide in fear. Clothe us with your mercy and forgiveness. Send us companions on our journey as we share your life. Make us one, risen Christ. Cleanse our hearts. Shower us with life. To you be given all praise with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our processional hymn, which is the strife is o'er the battle done as it's listed in the bulletin, verses one, two, and three. The boundless grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, and the light of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord, Lord of mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Oh, to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, God, Lamb of God, you take 
Let us pray. O God, you gave your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of the resurrection through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with our first reading. Peter crosses the immense religious and social boundary that separates Jews from Gentiles in order to proclaim the good news of Jesus's life, death, and resurrection so that God's forgiveness in Jesus's name would reach out to all people. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles, the 10th chapter. Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Word of God word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Open for me the gates of righteousness. 
The core of the Christian faith and Paul's preaching is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. As the crucified and risen Christ appeared to the earliest of his followers, so we experience the presence of the risen one in the preaching of this faith. A reading from St. Paul's first epistle to the Corinthians, the 15th chapter. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Word of God, word of life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. reading from the gospel according to St. Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go up and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll the stone for us who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. He said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who, has, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look. There is the place they laid him, but go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone. 
for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Adoring praises now we bring, and with the heavenly blessed sing, God's has triumph, hallelujah, it's all the Father and our Lord, to spirit blessed you to think of a movie or a tv series that you've seen one where the ending just kind of leaves you unsatisfied a movie or series that doesn't end with a happy ending and all the loose ends wrapped up in a nice bow one that ends right after the climax where the plot is unresolved and you have an assortment of unanswered questions there's been a few that that i've seen that come to mind the 1960s TV series, The Prisoner, left more questions than gave answers to every single of its 16 episodes. You're probably going to have to look that one up. In the mid to late 2000s, the TV series Lost was on. Remember that? The conclusion of that series was so very unsatisfying to many of the people who watched it faithfully. So many unresolved questions and plot twists the whole series was one mystery after another, and for many people, the ending of the show left people scratching their heads and wanting answers. We'd been so drawn into the show, and we couldn't wait to see how it was all unresolved, and we never got that. And maybe the best and most humorous example of a movie that ends with an odd and anticlimactic way is the 1975 movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. You probably never thought you'd hear a sermon including Monty Python, but here we go. It ends as King Arthur is taking his valiant knights to make an assault on a French castle that supposedly holds the Holy Grail. It's this moment of excitement. You get all of the music and everything is, is rushing towards this castle. And then all of a sudden, the then present day 1975 police break into the movie, arrest the cast for murder of the narrator and destruction of property and abruptly shut down the film. It ends with a hand of one of the officers covering the lens of the camera. It just goes dark and that's it. That's how it ends. <laughs> Very fitting for Monty Python. Did King Arthur get the grail? Did the French actually have it? Did the movie mean anything? We have no idea, it just ends. Our gospel reading for today, Easter Sunday, it's what's known as the traditional ending of the Gospel of Mark, the ending that appeared in the earliest manuscripts of the gospel. It would only be later on that verses nine through 20, what constitutes our current complete version of the gospel, if you look in your Bible, would be added on. And I get it. I can see why people would want to add more to the end of this gospel. The traditional ending of Mark is as anticlimactic as it gets. There's an empty tomb for sure. We have an angel just like the other gospel accounts. And the angel gives instructions to the women at the tomb to go and proclaim. And you think that what comes next is a Jesus sighting or an appearance. But no. You got to go back to the Easter vigil for that one. The traditional ending of this gospel comes crashing to an end with one verse, verse 8. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. 
Roll the credits. That's it. You can go home now. That's the end of the gospel. To make sense of this, let's consider two things. The bookends of the gospel of Mark. One, go back to the very beginning of the gospel of Mark. The very first verse is vitally important to grasping what the gospel is all about. Mark writes this, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Right at the very beginning, Mark is telling us that this is just the beginning of the story, not the whole story. And it's the story about the Son of God. The label says everything we need to know. This isn't just some guy or another teacher or even a prophet. This is about the Son of God. And there's no surprises. It's all laid out in the very first verse of who Jesus is. Or as the interpreter's Bible says about verse 1, the gospel does not mean a book or the message delivered by Jesus, but the Christian proclamation of the divine message of salvation through Jesus Christ. It is the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Jesus is the embodiment of good news. Jesus is the gospel. Here's the second thing to consider, the ending. There have been lo- there's been a long debate about the ending of Mark's gospel because of how the traditional ending concludes. As the interpreter's Bible closes its commentary on Mark, it asks, was the final page of Mark's gospel lost? Was there an ending other than the two which we've been supplied with to make up the lack, the longer of which is printed at the end of Mark in verses 9 through 20? Perhaps he never finished the story. Perhaps the last page was lost. There is a real fitness, however, in the fact that his is an unfinished, an unfinished gospel. The gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is always unfinished. It is, con- it is a continued story to be carried out in individual lives. Paul added his page to it. Last of all, he appeared to me. We heard that in 1 Corinthians. There is an unwritten page left for each of us to write our record of what Jesus has said and done in us. Mark has only begun to tell the story for us. And he hands it off to everyone who follows to continue the story. It's been handed off to all generations who have come since Mark, who wrote his account of the gospel. It's been handed off to so many more who have come before us. And now it's being handed on to us. Yes, literally us gathered here, even online. We're called to proclaim the gospel about Jesus Christ, to continue the story about Jesus and how he still shows up in unexpected ways, how he continues to encounter us, how he continues to be present with people in the midst of pain and suffering and death, as well as times of great joy and thanksgiving, how he frees people from bondage, how he upends the injustice to restore just and right relationships, how he continues to feed us through the Eucharist, how he ends oppressive systems, how he continues to unfold the kingdom of God right here, right now, and invites all people to participate in it how he continues to gather us together in sacred community, even online, how he calls on us into discipleship, the way of peace, mercy, and love, how he continues to send us out to serve, to see the image of God in the outcasts of society, in our neighbors, and yes, even in our enemies, how he transforms lives, how he continues to call on us to tell the story to hand the unwritten pages of our gospel account on to those we encounter and to future generations. You, yes, you, each have a gospel account within you. And it's not done. It's unresolved, just like our gospel reading for today, because Jesus isn't done yet. There are empty pages 
in your gospel account. Let's see what happens next. Amen. We'll continue with our hymn of the day, which is Jesus Christ is risen today, verses 1, 2, and 4, as they're printed in our bulletin. Jesus Christ is risen today. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all God's creation. Almighty God, we are filled with prayers of joy today. We lift them up to you with over overflowing thanks and renewed faith. We are filled with the good news, the resurrection of your son Jesus Christ on this Easter Sunday. We are ready to proclaim that good news. Help us to share the story of Jesus today and every day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for the earth and all creation. We rejoice at the signs of spring renewal all around us. May the colors and beauty of spring outside our windows renew our spirits and give us hope, especially as many of us have been indoors more than usual over the past year of the pandemic. 
Help us to be good stewards of all you have provided through your amazing creation. All plants and trees, crops and farmland, oceans and rivers, mountains and valleys, animals, sky and earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of peace and justice, we pray for all nations and all leaders, especially those continuing to make decisions about the COVID-19 pandemic, vaccine distributions and economic recovery. Strengthen all community, local, state and world leaders through mind, body and spirit to make wise decisions in the best interest of the population to see us through the healing and recovering process. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we remember and pray for all people affected by poverty, sickness, and oppression. We especially pray for your healing hand on all those affected by COVID-19 and all medical professionals, hospitals, vaccine centers, doctors, and nurses providing care during this great time of great need. It has been a difficult year and we are grateful for their skills, wisdom, and care. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of grace, we pray for the lonely, the homeless, imprisoned, and marginalized. Jesus died on the cross and was raised from the dead for all people who believe, certainly including the lonely, homeless, and marginalized. May that message and reassurance comfort all who need to hear it. Guide our footsteps to do your work, to be the hands and heart of Jesus as we reach out to and help others. Let your face shine upon us as your servants. Fill your people with love and light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we pray for the congregation and ministries of St. Stephen, including our friends from Dinners with Friends and our Flying J and Petra ministry. Bless Pastor Matthew and his family for all they have done to keep the congregation connected over the past year. Bless all St. Stephen's ministries as they continue to flourish during these challenging times. Thank you for the technology of Zoom, Facebook, and other tools that have allowed us to stay connected even when we're physically apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Healing God, we pray for all the people who are hurting, sick, hospitalized, and for loved ones who have recently died. This past week of Holy Week, we felt the burden and the pain that Jesus went through for our sakes on the cross. We are witnesses to his resurrection. We know that God's love overcomes all earthly pain. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Prayers for Jeff as he is in the hospital in the ICU. Prayers for Michelle Bowers as she battles breast cancer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always, and also with you. Let us show a sign of that peace. Peace. We continue with our offering. The instructions for the offering are in the bulletin. We thank you for, the, for your generosity, which allows us to do the ministries. Some of them were listed in the bulletin, in the, um, in the prayers of the church. And I invite you at this time also to set your own table. You need a little bit of bread and a little bit of uh, either wine or grape juice, just enough to consume during communion. Anything that's left over can either be consumed immediately after worship, or what you can do is you can put it outside, dump it back into the ground. That's the appropriate way to dispose of any remaining parts of the element from worship. And throughout worship here, um, for those of you who are not as familiar with our the way we do this, is at one point I'll, I'll instruct you to lift up the different elements so that they will be uh, visible. Let us pray. God of love, you call us beloved children and welcome us to your table. Receive our lives and the gifts we offer. Abide with us and send us in service to a suffering world for the sake of your beloved child, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of your Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, and with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Blessed are you, O God of the universe. Your mercy is everlasting and your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for creating the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed one. Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out on all the nations. I invite you to hold up your element of bread. In the night in which he was handed over, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, I invite you to hold up your cup with either wine or grape juice. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. With this bread and cup, we remember our Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. O God of resurrection and new life, pour out your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine. Bless this feast. Grace our table with your presence. Come, Holy Spirit. Reveal yourself in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ for the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. Come, Holy Spirit. With your holy ones of all times and places, with the earth and all its creatures, with sun and moon and stars, we praise you. O God, blessed and holy Trinity, now and forever. Amen. Let us, Lord, remember, Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The risen Christ invites us to this table. Come, eat, and be satisfied.
you may now partake of the elements. Let us pray. Wellspring of joy, through this meal you have put gladness into our hearts. Satisfy the hunger still around us and send us as joyful witnesses that your love may bring to the hearts of all people through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May our glorious God grant you a spirit of wisdom to know and to love the living, living Lord Jesus. The God of life, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. We'll close with our sending hymn, which is Christ the Lord is risen today. Alleluia. Verses 1 through 4. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed, alleluia. You are the body of Christ raised up for the world. Go in peace, share the good news. Thanks be to God, we will. <laughs>